The Wither is a terrible creature that destroys everything it touches, and whatever crosses its path gets cursed with decay. But there's one thing that is really strange about the Wither. They don't spawn on their own. The Wither needs to be summoned. How is it summoned for the first time? And most importantly, why? Well, anyways, we're gonna analyze the lore and subtle hints in the game and piece together the history of the Wither. In the beginning, circa 10,000 BC, the builders were just uncommunicated groups of cavemen. They lived in dirt houses and led simple lives above ground, forging for food by hunting animals and killing zombies during the night. It is by this time that they took their first historic steps towards becoming the builders by crafting their first ever crafting table, which would be a staple of the civilization. Thousands of years have passed, and the builders are no longer simple cavemen, forging and hunting, struggling to protect their small clans. They've evolved into the most advanced civilization in the world, building large cities and kingdoms, trading far and wide, developing amazing structures and objects. Inevitably, a conflict came into being. Several monarchs around the world wished to expand their territory, so they waged a war onto the neighboring kingdoms. The first great war had begun, and this is where the Wither story, my story, begins. I was once a man, honest and hardworking, a simple farmer by trade, like my father and grandfather before me. My only wish was to care for my wife and son, and to live a pretty good and quiet life. But seriously, they were my whole world, everything that I truly cared for. And when the Great War began, my king commanded that all able-bodied men had to serve in his royal army. So it came to be that I was forced to become a soldier and leave my family and home behind to go fight for a king that I just didn't care about. But I made a promise to my family that I will be back one day safe from harm and I will be finally reunited with them. Well, 10 long years went by and finally the war ended. My kingdom was victorious, and I was finally allowed to return home. My wife and son waited for me. They never forgot my promise. My son was practically a grown man, and my wife had a few more crow's feet around her eyes. But hey, they were still my family, my entire world. For long years afterwards, I lived a pretty chill life with my family. Trying to forget that the things I had seen and the enemies that I had made. I really hope to become the farmer that I always wanted to be and to have a fulfilling and simple life. I was betting that the rest of my days would be just like that, but sadly, it was not to be. A courtier of the king, an officer of the royal army, blamed me for the death of his son. His heir was a great man. His zeal and bravery inspired me to continue fighting and to never forget my promise. When he died, I was the only one by his side, and I resolved to personally inform his father of the death of his son. Blinded by grief, his father blamed me for his death, cursing me and swearing that he would hate me and take everything away from me. I thought that they were just the words of a grieving father, so I forgave him and wished him peace. But I was so wrong. He tracked me down and made good on his promise. He took my family away from me and used the services of a witch, a user of black magic, to curse me with eternal life so I could live the countless years without that which I loved. More than a century passed and my soul did not leave this place. The witch's curse remained strong, forcing me to live on in this changing world. Even despite the curse, I remained an honest man. A good man wishing to honor the memory of my family. Over the many years, I became sort of a fable. A local legend saving innocence and helping the needy. People everywhere spoke in whispers of a hooded man coming to them in their time of need. Be it with food or with a helping hand. It is a life, even if it's not the one I wanted. For decades, I watched over the growing kingdom, fascinated by the new innovations and technologies they developed. The material that the experts have called iron was particularly impressive. The things that they could build with it were incredible, but I couldn't help but think of the potential for war hidden in it. I grew detached 
to the going-ons of kings and nobles, their actions more similar to greedy bandits than proper leaders. I only cared for the common people, those most affected by this war. The threat of war was on my mind, and I was worried for them and for the kingdom. To my sadness, my worries came true, and war soon raged once again over the kingdom. It continued for decades, with no signs of stopping. The greed of my so-called king knew no bounds. Having heard the legends that had sprung around in my immortality, he sent out countless knights and soldiers, hoping to track me down and capture me. To win the war for him, or to use me to gain immortality, I did not know. At long last, after many fail attempts, he sent his court wizard, whom he believed to be his most loyal subject. The magic user, only being truly loyal to himself, embarked on his quest, hoping to gain the secret to my longevity. Relentless, he finally cornered me after months of pursuit, forcing me to do the battle against him, though I could escape his grasp. Driven by despair, the wizard used an unknown spell he had found long ago in a hidden tomb, a last-ditch attempt to capture me. This spell was not what the wizard thought it was. Instead of capturing me or fizzling out, a great explosion raced through the landscape, consuming us both. The last thing I saw before the darkness took me was a flash of purple. I woke up with a gasp that I was sure could be heard across the whole kingdom. Struggling to breathe, I looked around me. Red stone and fiery rivers were all that I saw. The air was warm and difficult to breathe. A sense of malice permeated the strange realm. I couldn't see any other living being, not even the wizard, just red stone and more fire rivers. I stood unsteadily on my feet and started walking in a random direction, calling out for anything for anyone. I did not wish to remain in this accursed place. I wandered that unfamiliar realm for an unknown amount of years. Time didn't hold much meaning to me anymore. The constant reddish lighting and the lack of moon or sun or stars made tracking time impossible. I noticed my appearance changing over the course of the countless years. No longer was I a normal looking human. My skin had gained a dark color with purple light shining through the gaps. My skin, it reflected the malice in the air that I breathed. I was twice cursed. First, with the loss of my family and normal life. Then, with the loss of my humanity. My mind and personality dwindled, but they were not fully forgotten. I wandered the realm looking for companionship and a way out. The memories of my family were my only friends. In the overworld, the Builder Society continued advancing without the Wither. Most of them had even forgotten the legend about a hooded man helping people. The wars were a thing of the past, and the Builders united into a single society, using magic and technology for the betterment of all, building incredible temples for the worship of their gods, and fortresses to protect people from animals and other sorts of beasts and creatures. Through the use of magic, the builders harnessed the power of portals, allowing them to travel instantaneously to great distance. They wished to use the portals to explore new worlds. The first portal opened, and the scientists named this new place the Nether, due to the harsh landscape. Wary of any hostile denizens, they explored the nether. Drifting without direction, I came across an unusual sight. A pink, small, and round animal. Pig! My hazy memory supplied. A creature used to feed humans. Realization dawned on me then. The appearance of pig meant that humans and a possible way out of where nearby. I patted the pig's head conveying my gratitude to the animal and rushed towards some noises. I heard in the distance, in my haste, I didn't notice the pig wither away and die after I petted him. A few minutes of running took me to a fenced area filled with pigs and a single human tending to them. His back to me. This sight filled me with unimaginable joy making me forget about my less than normal appearance and to rush towards him, shouting my happiness and excitement. The human turned around and my joy was cut short. Instead of the concern or curiosity I expected to see, the human's face 
showed only terror as scream erupted from his throat. And he tried to flee, but tripped over his own feet. I stepped closer to the human, hoping to help him get back on his feet. But to my horror, when I touched him, decay started spreading rapidly through his body, turning it to dust. I locked eyes with the other humans who had been drawn by the commotion. I tried to speak, to shout that it wasn't my fault, that I didn't mean to do it all, but all that came out of my mouth were ghastly sounds, befitting more of a ghost than a human. The people ran away in terror, calling for the guards to save them. The soldiers attacked me without hesitation or remorse, thinking me an unfeeling monster. I tried to get them to stop their mad charge, blocking their swords and pushing them away, but each guard that I touched fell to the floor and failed to move further. Distraught and scared, I ran from the humans, heading deep into the realm, wishing to hide, confused and ashamed of what had just transpired. I could feel my mind fracturing under pressure of what had just happened, incapable of understanding why they hated me. In the distance, the humans celebrated their victory. The Wither quickly became a legend of terror and despair for the humans. His image integrated into their architecture and culture to serve as a warning for future generations. For a long time, I observed humans. The only sign that years had passed at all was the aging of the different soldiers that came through the nether. My mind continued to fall further into darkness. Confusion and sadness plagued me. The image of my beautiful wife and son faded little by little. The honest farmer that I used to be faded with them, leaving only this withering monster. The humans spent all that time reinforcing their hold on the nether. Fortresses filled with all sorts of resources spread out over the realm, manned by the callous soldiers. The rulers of the builders, led by fear of what I had become, ordered their wizards and scientists to find a way to kill or contain me resulting in many of the creatures that now reside in the nether, like the ghast, triders, piglins, and magma cubes. Skeletons also found their way into the nether around this time, whether deliberately or by accident, nobody knew. The builders quickly learned not to bury their dead while in the nether, for their souls would be consumed by the very ground, creating pockets of soul sand and giving birth to wither skeletons which were named by the humans because of their, their similar look to me. Little by little, the nether was filled with life, of a kind. The wither skeletons, luckily for the humans, still retained some figments of their past selves. Their only wish was to fight and hunt me relentlessly. Their constant attacks whittled away at my frayed sanity and my life became an endless battle. After many years of work, the magicians and scientists finally developed a method they believed could be used to capture me. Filled with resolve, they set off to the nether to battle against the monster that I had become and hopefully capture me. After many days of combat and many losses, the humans finally managed to capture and drag me back to their world, hoping to study me. For the first time in centuries, I was exposed to sunlight and fresh air. Both nothing more than long lost memories to me. But the nether had changed me greatly over the aeons. The sun burned my skin and the fresh air cut my lungs. Not even the sight of magnificent cities and temples wrought by the builder's hands drew any sort of positive reaction from me. The simple farmer was long gone. Only the feared creature remained. capture was considered the start of a new era, an age of progress and peace. The builder masses could finally see the creature that they had terrified their society for so long and they learned not to fear me. After all, I was imprisoned and powerless, or so they thought. The different researchers wasted no time in trying to find a way to finally be rid of my existence sparing no expenses and forgetting about any kind of morality. Trapped in the builder's prison, I couldn't do anything except observe and bide my time. The memories of a beautiful wife and a child no longer existed. Three centuries more passed and this so-called scientist 
were still unable to banish me from their world. Instead, their focus changed to using my powers for their own selfish needs. Even after all these years, humans were still greedy. Through the use of my powers, the proud civilization became a corrupted empire where the strong reigned. A mad wizard drawn to the power of decay believed that he was the only one capable of controlling me. The only one capable of binding me in chains. Driven by his mad desire, the wizard invaded the facility where they kept me and freed me. My patience was rewarded. After three centuries of silence and careful watch, I was unleashed upon this world. Nothing could stop me. The first to fall to my rampage was the wizard in my long-standing prison. My vengeance was finally nigh. Their corrupt empire, unprepared to what I was going to unleash on them, thousands perished over the next centuries. All resistance was crushed by my hand, and many builders fled in hidden these remote places, hoping to evade my gaze. I let them run and think they could hide. A good hunt was always amusing, but there were a few that I couldn't find. The leader of the builders was nowhere to be found. Unknown to me, they hid themselves deep within the earth, near the mantle, and worked tirelessly for a way to bring my end, like many before had tried. The once proud civilization was nothing more than rubble, sunken temples, and abandoned buildings, all that remained of them. I wandered the world, searching for more humans to consume, and their souls provided me with power and nutrition. The thousands of souls I consumed gave me so much energy that my presence evolved into a storm of incredible power. Deep in their strongholds, the last remnants of the builders tirelessly worked, hoping to find a way to save themselves. At last, after many years, a wizard driven by desperation discovered a way to seal me away. Sadly for them, then luckily for me, this method would still leave a way for me to return. Though, it would have to be through the actions of an independent individual. Despite this flaw, the wizard believed that to save their people, the plan was worth the risk. Without this leader's permissions, the brave wizard set forth all alone to confront me at the height of my power and finally put an end to my rampage. A brave but foolish man. The king, believing the mission to be hopeless, developed another portal with unknown materials, leading to an unknown place. He opened the portal and the magic used was so great that I, hundreds of meters above on the surface, felt it. Elated at finally finding the stronghold, I rushed down, destroying the very ground around me, wishing nothing more than to sate my desire for souls and vengeance. But before I could capture anyone, the king and the remnants of his people escaped through the portal to lands unknown, disappearing from history. Enraged by the loss of my prey, I returned to the surface in a haze of anger, where to my eternal shame, I, the greatest being in the world, was caught and stripped of my new form. Empowered by the brave and foolish wizard, a simple mortal man, and was finally banished. The wizard, having a long life due to his magic, gathered the few surviving humans still on the surface and began a new civilization that focused on living peacefully with the land, casting the power of magic out and forbidding anyone from using it. He hoped he would be the last magician. Before he died, he made sure to leave countless records of the events that had led to the destruction of the mighty builder civilization and of the method required to summon and banish me. And so, the years passed and the world knew relative peace. Millennia had passed, and the horrors of the past were forgotten by all. In this age, a new form of life came into existence, the being known as Steve, a creature similar in the look to the mighty builders of the past, came onto an empty world bereft of large cities or advanced technology. The only inhabitants of the strange land lived peacefully in simple, small villages 
only knowing their very basics of building methods. Their heritage lost to time. Spread throughout the overworld, this Steve found signs of a once proud civilization, be it underneath the sea or in the large deserts and jungles, all of them empty and in ruins except for the occasional loot. The cause of the destruction? A mystery to all. He wished to know what happened. So he set out on a quest, like a hero of old, to solve the enigma. The new life form explored the different ruins for several years, constantly searching for the reason behind the end. The sunken temple were his latest find, the Tourmaline monuments, the prize. These ruins were filled with guardians, creatures corrupted by dark powers long ago. They guarded the monuments and temple, protecting its secrets. Undaunted, he battled these guardians for many long days, and after finally emerging victorious, he was rewarded with the knowledge on how to create portals. Beyond excited, the hero wasted no time and opened one of these portals and crossed into the nether. The first being to have done so in Ian's. In the nether, this Steve discovered the piglins. Without the builder's presence, they had developed a tribal-like society dealing in gold. The hero traded with them and used the new resources to explore the many abandoned fortresses that dotted this harsh realm. In many of the forts, he came across the withered skeletons, who still continued their endless mission, and inside these structures, he also found many chests, containing the loot typical of the builder's constructions. Despite these great discoveries, Steve was no closer to finding the truth. Years passed, but this strange being continued his research, never tiring. While exploring the ancient sand temples, he came across several murals depicting a strange three-headed creature. The images exuded a sense of hate and fear. Driven by fear, Steve ran away from the murals, heading deeper into the temple and by complete accident discovered a hidden library of sorts. Elated, the wanderer wasted no time in reading every book. Desperate for any kind of knowledge, most of what he was found was useless for him. Some were just simple records of grain harvest and such, and many more were little more than dust, but a few were more than priceless. These few were diaries, damaged and barely legible, but legible all the same, written by an unknown man who claimed to be a wizard, containing information about the last few days of the Empire. He read the undamaged parts of the diary and uncovered the secrets of a summoning ritual. The ritual captured his full attention and he disregarded the rest of the diary, thinking that he didn't need to know more. He rushed to prepare for the ritual, uncaring of the possible danger. The being known as Steve spent the last few years of his life journeying across the overworld and the nether, collecting all the necessary parts to construct the ritual. His single-minded mentality blinded him to the danger that he had put himself and the world under. He battled with the skeletons, monsters, and all manners of beasts. Each victory convinced him that he was doing the right thing. Finally, after many years exploring and hunting for information, the adventurer was ready to commence the ritual and finally get some answers. First, he used the Wither Skulls, only found in the nether. Next, he used the Soul Sand, a creepy, bizarre sand that had screaming faces frozen in time inside of it. He hoped with all of his heart that they were not real. The moments had come, and the hero placed the last skull in its proper place. Elated, he waited for something to happen. For the moment, he had worked so far to reach. The silence stretched on. Nothing occurred and the hero waited. Just when he had started to lose all hope, a wave of malice emerged from the skulls. Its eyes filled with an evil purple light. An explosion took over the room, destroying the wanderer and releasing me onto the world once more. I was once again free to roam and after consuming the soul of the Wanderer, I knew exactly how to make my way back to the overworld. 
the world that had cursed me again and again would pay the consequences, even though no more builders remained to experience them. I destroyed every village and settlement that I could find. My power is too great to be matched by any living thing, though it had been eons since I last had a home. So I built one, a temple to my greatness. My rage knew no limit. I brought chaos to everything around me to satisfy my evil heart. But like everything before, the sudden joy would soon be overshadowed by despair. I realized that I was too strong. I no longer felt any joy at the destruction of mere villagers. So I made it my objective to hunt down every powerful being in existence. Remembering the wardens I had fought, I traveled to the deep dark where I found an ancient city waiting for me. Dozens of different wardens fought me and all fell until their leader faced me in battle. He fought well and unexpectedly became a friend. It had been thousands of years since I had felt something like that. The evil heart of the warden leader held dark plans for the overworld and I promised not to get in his way if he kept out of mine. After leaving the depths, I scoured the overworld, looking for a worthy challenge. Before long, I had fought a tribe of pillagers led by a so-called king. I hated kings, though I couldn't remember exactly why anymore, but I quickly took his army down and faced him. He never stood a chance against my power. Instead of killing him, I took him and made him a prison cell inside my new home. I would do this with every creature who dared to face me. I had finally found purpose. I would imprison my foes and rule the overworld, or destroy everything in the process. I visited the depths of the ocean and the fortresses of the nether. I sought the legendary elder guardians who had made a home in the ancient temples where I was once locked up. I fought them and took one as a trophy. Next, I made my way to another fortress. Unlike anything I had seen in all my years, there I faced a whole army of blazes on my way to take down the blaze guardian who stood no chance of hurting me as I was immune to fire. After all was said and done, I took my war trophies into my museum. Neither the ocean nor the nether held enemies strong enough for me, or so I thought. My battle in the nether had ruffled the feathers of the piglin king who challenged me to battle his personal golem. I accepted and made my way to his palace. The Blackstone Golem was a sight to behold, big and strong. I barely made a dent with my attacks, but he was also slow and not that smart, so avoiding him was pretty easy. The battle was long, but after I killed him, there was only one more matter to attend to, the little Piglin King. I hunted him down and took him as a trophy. The world would learn what happens to those who dare challenge me. After running out of worthy challenges, both in the overworld and in the nether, I turned to the mysterious home dimension of the Enderman. Opening the portal wasn't an issue. After so much fighting, it was time to visit the place those ancient builders had gone to while trying to escape my wrath such a long time ago. Inside the end dimension, I discovered the faith of these foolish builders. There were enormous end cities filled with loot, but they were far gone, corrupted into endermen. There was one who would make a worthy enemy though, the Ender Dragon. The fight was intense. I hadn't faced an enemy so resistant before, but even the mighty dragon couldn't stand up to my power. In the end, it fell just like the others before. I took his egg as a trophy. With the Ender Dragon Egg, my collection was apparently complete. I had traveled through all dimensions and biomes, but nobody was left to challenge me. The overworld was mine to rule, and I started summoning others like myself to reshape all the dimensions in my form. I would rule a universe of withers, and there was no one who could stand in my way. I thought that all my enemies were defeated, but unknown to me, forces from the void were planning an attack. 
another adventurer, like the one called Steve, had followed the steps after I gained my freedom. She was called Alex. And unlike the foolish adventurer that summoned me, she actually read the rest of the wizard's diary. Gathering the items to take me down proved hard for her, but she would not stop until she had found them. She hunted down my young withers and harvested the nether stars from their corpses. And so, after a lot of work, she had created an array of beacons to summon the Celestials. I could have killed her at a moment's notice, but she made sure to always be on the run, never sleeping in the same place. So I wouldn't find her. By the time I discovered her location, it was too late. Her ritual had been completed, and two Celestials were crossing over into the overworld. I fought with the Celestials, but it was no use. Their bodies could not be hurt by my powers. They were immune to withering. They looked down upon me, and with their magic, I was banished once again. There was a problem with their plans. However, I had grown too powerful. My body held so much dark energy to be dissolved into nothingness. The best they could do was locking me up in the nether. I was once again trapped in this godforsaken dimension. Although, I wouldn't be trapped there forever. I had all eternity to find my way out, and I would eventually manage to do it. The overworld will be mine sooner or later. I once again found myself trapped in this harsh dimension. This time, though, I wouldn't just escape. I would make it the center of my empire. The nether would bend to my will and serve as my own personal stronghold. But before any of that could happen, I would need to get back my strength. The nether creatures are dark and evil, but they have souls just like any other overworld being. So I turned them into my food. All the souls I consumed didn't go unnoticed. Then soon, a challenger arrived. A mutant guest. Claiming the nether as his own domain. I quickly showed him the foolishness of his actions. And he cowardly escaped to live another day. While exploring the nether, I met him with a skeleton named Jack. He apparently was a fan of my work from 100 days as a wither and desired to join me as it took control of this dimension. He told me about a way to exit the nether by consuming the heart of its powerful beings. Then he led me to the lair of the gas where I abandoned him. I have no time for companions. I am the wither storm and I work alone. Once in the gas fortress, I destroyed everything in my path consuming souls left and right until I reached the mewing ghast. The fight was quick and he never stood a chance. So I rushed towards him, deflecting his attacks while taking out his minions. It's some with the skulls! Surprisingly, he caught me off guard and tried strangling me with his tentacles. Can you believe this ghast? Seriously? I was trying to go easy on you, but here's my vision storm. That poison doesn't taste so good. Suddenly, he used a heat wave ability, which pushed me back. As he spat out a bunch of fireballs, I quickly deflected them back, and he just simply spun around. What? Since when do gas do that? With just a few hits, I weakened the mutant gas. This is exactly why you never mess with a wither storm. Huh, look at this. A new ability called Shadow Sneak. But if I could give the final strike, he escaped once again, or so he thought. Harnessing my ability to move through the shadows, I quickly followed the mute gas without being noticed. Eventually, I caught him talking with a mysterious figure about the gas staff. There was something in that mysterious voice that seemed familiar, but I just couldn't figure out where I knew it from. So much of my past is now a blur. I want him gone. Go find the gas staff and regain your power. I did what I could, but my powers are weak. The mutant blaze keeps the gas staff secure. Then we must start a battle. Send in the gas to cause a distraction. So I decided to make it my mission to get my tentacles upon the gas staff and its protector, the mutant blaze. 
I made my way to the Blaze Fortress. Its building of pure fire wouldn't stop me. I found the place the gas staff was hidden and battled the fire golem. It was a fierce battle. The golem couldn't really hurt me, but it was stubborn and tanky, which meant that I couldn't get inside until I got help from the foolish mutant ghast. In his attempt to get the staff for himself, he distracted the golem. And so the staff became mine. I then reached the central palace of the blazes, where I found the mutant blaze. He tried to reason with me and talked of a prophecy, but it just didn't matter. I had come for his heart and nothing would stand in my way. His fire-based attacks barely did anything to me. So after a well-placed laser shot, his flames started to dwindle. And not too long after his fire was out, leaving me to consume his heart, which gave me the power of healing whenever I came in contact with fire. Having taken the first step to dominate the nether, I set my eyes on getting enough netherite to upgrade my abilities, and I knew just the place to get it. The Piglin City, which was ruled by the Piglin Chief, a greedy and narrow-minded brute whose only desire was to stuff his vault with gold and precious ores until it was full. It didn't take much to trick him into letting me inside. I hope you're not seeking any trouble. We are peaceful. Unless we are hungry, then it's a massacre. I come in peace. I'm just looking to make some quick gold. Very well. Then build us an automatic gold trading farm, and we shall help. So I managed to convince the Piglin Chief and began building an automatic Piglin trading farm. First, I built an open area for the redstone magic combined with the hopper system. Afterwards, I added the glass and the carpets. Then, fill the top chest with some gold and watch the farm go to work. Just look at all these ender pearls. After a few hours, the Piglin Chief was stoked. After all, this dude loves getting rich. Just like how I really wanted his netherite blocks. He even took me to his vault room to create a piglin farm inside. Moose, we appreciate you helping innovate this city. Of course, anytime, Piglin Chief. I, I got you. I was starting to feel a little bit guilty. Anyways, I kept the obsidian blocks for myself and turned the iron nuggets into blocks. And he let me inside his palace. I was just gearing to raid his vault when I overheard a commotion outside. It was a Wither Skull Overlord looking for me. I quickly merged with the shadows and eavesdropped on him as he massacred innocent piglins, searching for my location. The Wither Skeletons threatened to harm the citizens unless someone talked. Start talking, or else you will all wither. Where is the Wither Storm? Oh man, this is not gonna end well. Where's the piglin chief? He started slaying the piglins, and I just stayed there, hiding inside of the shadows. I low-key felt bad and wanted to help them out, but I just couldn't blow my cover. The cowardly piglin chief didn't even show his thick face. Something in me took me back to an ancient memory. The details were hazy, but I remembered a cruel king only interested in wealth and causing harm to his subjects. Something had to be done. I decided to confront the Piglin Chief, but to no one's surprise, he was ready to betray me and cash the bounty on my heads. I faked being trapped, and this pig actually thought that he locked me up inside his vault. Big mistake. There's nothing my wither powers can't break down. I was soon free again, taking absolutely everything from his vault, enough to upgrade my abilities even more. You fool! You stole my valuables and destroyed my castle! He charged right at me with his heart rhythm and kicked me! Don't I quickly counter his attacks and charge my wither skulls right at him! Hey Piggy, you're looking like a snack! Like, like, like literally a snack! I, I, I'm gonna eat you, bro! I was really getting on his nerves! And my wither skulls kept weakening his poglin! And then suddenly... The piglin chief started throwing his javelins, thinking that it would hurt me. So I summoned the thunderstorm, stunning the chief and finishing the battle with the boom. He never stood a chance. His life and his heart were mine. 
I was quickly becoming unstoppable. But my attacks on the piglins and the blazes wouldn't go unnoticed. And so, one day, in my own base, I got ambushed by an army of magma cubes. It was a bad move. Thanks to the blaze hearts, I was not only immune to fire, but touching it actually healed me. My revenge would be swift. I made my way to the magma fortress, where I faced the magma king. Did you really think you could invade my brother's blaze fortress and get away with it? Yes, and I got a souvenir! I am the king of magma, and you shall be my snack. Your snack? Oh, you are a funny guy, man. The magma king fired his flamethrower, causing me to heal. Hey, Bozo, withers are immune to fire. So I fired back with my storm vision ability, striking the magma and poisoning it with my acid rain. He sent out a flurry of punches, then used his lava spray, summoning mini volcanoes and finally smashed the floor with his magma crush ability but everything the magma king tried had no effect on my defenses with my magma armor and my abilities i clearly had the upper hand quickly defeating the mutant magma cube he also never stood a chance both his soul and his heart were finally mine by the end of the day my time in the nether had proved fruitful. I needed just one more heart to complete my escape. So I invaded a skelly fortress in the search of the Wither Overlord. The walls of the fortress were sturdy and even resisted some of my attacks for a while. I didn't face much resistance afterwards and once inside, I found Jack. He insisted that I follow them to the Overlord and I obliqued once there. Though, he revealed himself as the son of the Wither Overlord, who offered me to join him after proving myself in a battle. Good job, my boy. You brought the Wither Storm right to me. Jack, how could you, man? You betrayed me. There is no betrayal here. Simply an offer. Join us, and we will rule over the world. Together, we can overtake the overworld. Can you believe this? They asked me to join them and be a part of the Wither Skeletons. At first, I thought they were joking, but they were being legit. We will even give you your own throne. And, uh, a staff. A wither staff, yes. Wait, a wither staff? I agreed at first, but then, once I had beaten him, I killed him for his part. The mutant charged in, slashing away with his wither axe. He was relentless, dealing tons of damage and knocking me back. Wow, uh, not bad, honestly. But who can play this game? Take some of this! Bruh! He summoned an army of wither skeletons. There was hundreds of them attacking me. I needed to do something quick. So I used my lightning storm, zapping away every skeleton. Yo, keep them coming. This is honestly really fun. And it's super easy to take out the skeleton force. Now I just need some, just need some quick food. Ah, much better. I tried using my storm vision, but it had no effect on the overlord. Instead, he absorbed the abilities, powering himself up, and then striking me with his shadow fury ability. Luckily, I was immune to his attacks. He really couldn't wither me, and dodging his melee was pretty easy, making him look like a fool. I fired my gas stack, inactivated by laser explosives, engulfing him with a flurry of lasers destroying the mutant with her skeleton. That will serve as a warning to anyone who tries to challenge me again. After that, I had all the hearts that I needed to get out of the nether, and I became the leader of all the withers everywhere. Using the ability I received from consuming the wither heart, I opened a portal to the overworld. I crossed over, and once there, I felt a surge of power unlike anything in centuries. And suddenly, I morphed into the Titan Witherstorm! I even unlocked three new abilities, but the prophecy was coming true. Now, my mission was to conquer the rest of the overworld factions and consume more souls. Okay, I wouldn't be a Titan with a storm without destroying an entire village to show my dominance. I didn't wait any time to start harvesting souls. The Celestials had failed, and I would now conquer everything. 
there were only four factions strong enough to make a stand against me on the overworld. I could not continue. I started with the weakest link, the Panda Faction. They were led by a thick and greedy panda who didn't care about his people, only about his wealth. Not unlike the Piglin Chief. I gotta admit though, he had some crazy kung fu skills. But I enjoyed taking all that coward's wealth. Welcome to the Panda Faction! We are a humble community! Well, that's awesome to hear! We even have cute baby pandas! Look at them rolling around! I attacked the rich fat panda, sucker punching him through his village. So that's how we're going to play? The rich fat panda rolled right at me! He spin kicked my face and unleashed his kung fu panda moves! I'm telling you, bro, this dude really has some skills. He even deflected back my lasers with his attacks. I'm telling you, bro, he was very dangerous. <laughs> Yo, not bad, honestly. And then consuming his heart. Next, it was the turn of the copper golems. Those little golems weren't a threat. But the panda leader spoke of a copper transformer, and that had caught my attention. I invaded the copper fortress and found him. Our battle was fierce. I will eliminate you. The Copper Golem Transformer was waiting for an enemy to arrive. Now, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Uh, are we having a laser tag battle? Here, try some Wither Skulls. And how about some Wither Punches? How does that feel? Yo, where are you going? Hold on a second. He launched to the top of the fortress. So, I quickly followed him. I'm gonna run you over. What? What? How are you gonna do that? The Copper Golem transformed into a car. You don't see that every day. Skirt. He started firing a bunch of his laser turrets, which barely did anything to me. Watch me zoom. I wasn't sure what was going on, but this was one of the funniest battles I've had. So I find my ultimate attack combined with Wither Skull's punches and lasers. All I really wanted was simply his heart. Wait. You want my heart? Why didn't you say so? I only need batteries. He tossed me his copper golem mechanical heart and I consumed it, giving me the copper bless health boost. It was honestly unexpected. It seemed like I had just found a friend after a millennia of killing. Next on my list was the LA faction. And that's when the DJ LA showed up in front of his DJ booth. I've been working on this song for a while. Watch me kick this Witherstorm's face. What did you just say? The music was very slow paced. It looked like he was having fun. Occasionally, he did knock out a few of his own. Am I at a concert? But what, what am I supposed to be doing here? You know what, bro? Why don't we spice things up? Let's see if we can keep up with this. Oh! And that's when the music started change. He started throwing more discs. I kept dodging them while firing back with my lasers. So I used my explosive lasers and blew them up. While I was busy with the alley, something sinister was happening. Tonight, you grow strong. Stand still. It'll only sting for a little bit. I defeated the DJ alley. He collapsed onto the floor. He disappeared and all that was left was the alley heart for me to consume. Once I beat him, I was ambushed by the mutant ghast, and he probably thought that if he caught me right after a battle, I would be weak enough for him to take down. But he was proved wrong, and again, he had to run away with his tail, or weird tentacles, between his other weird tentacles. You get the point. The last faction strong enough to face me were the wardens in their caves. I made my way to the deep dark and found their ancient city where I faced none other than the mutant warden. The warden let out his sonic boom, roaring through the room. He could sense my presence. Come out of the dark, Wither. I can hear you. Well, you probably know why I'm here. The prophecy never fails. I've been waiting for this day. I emerged out of the shadows and sent out my wither punches and then used his warden screech at me. I flew over him and lasered him down. I gotta say, 
Out of all my opponents, he was very tough. I kept attacking, but he was sucking up all the damage. He rushed towards me and used his warden toss, launching me up in the sky. I poisoned him with my storm vision, then snuck into the shadows and finished him off with my ultimate move. I swallowed the warden heart, and after taking him down and consuming his heart, I gained the ability to use the warden screech. My conquest of the overworld was complete, and it was time to go back to the nether and start planning the invasion of the spirit realm. I would not rest until everything in existence kneeled under my power. During all my fighting to conquer the overworld, the cowardly Muin Gas started plotting in the nether. The Wither Skeleton called Jack, still angry after the death of the Wither Overlord, gave away the location of my hidden base. Little did they know, I brought back the ultimate security measure as loot for my conquest. My base was impenetrable, but the treacherous attacks wouldn't go unpunished. It was time to destroy all gas. I made my way to their fortress, taking every soul that dared to face me until I was in front of the mutant ghast. He talked big about stopping my reign of terror, but it wouldn't make any difference. Just as the times before, I defeated him, but this time, I wouldn't let him escape me. The corrupted gas used his giant flamethrower and let out a loud roar and launched with my ultimate wither skulls. The gas was confused. The gas was scared and he used his heat wave ability, pushing me back. What's the matter? Is that a gas here? I see. The gas cried out loud and summoned an army of gaslings. So I wanted to screech them into nothing. It was time for my ultimate form. I screamed and we charged at the gas, treading him apart. How is this possible? No matter. I will spread my corruption and destroy this world. You're just a puny little ghast. You're gonna need an entire makeover once I'm done with you. Together, we combine our attacks, causing a massive explosion. His body started shaking, blowing up into pieces. I walked over to the ghast heart and picked it up. This is the final heart. I was blessed to become the ultimate weather storm. Both his soul and heart were mine. With the nether and the overworld under my power, it was now time to make my way to the spirit realm. I arrived and was met by the soul reaper. At first, I was prepared for the battle of my life when I heard this mysterious voice that had helped the mutant gas. It was a small straw golem. He seemed familiar somehow. Like so many times in my life, powers beyond my control conspired against me like the sorcerer who cursed me to immortality, the wizards who experimented on me, the celestials that banished me. Now, the reaper and the straw golem had made some kind of a deal. Simon used some magical force I had never seen before. The straw golem started to absorb my powers. I could feel the life force leaving my body and after millennia my accursed existence would finally come to an end simon consumed the heart becoming his perfect form a chiseled hay golem